Hello and welcome to today's webinar, The Art of the Trunk Show, produced by iCare Pro, hosted by Review of Optometric Business and sponsored by Clear Vision Optical. I'm Roger Mummert, Content Director for Review of Optometric Business. In the next hour, we'll hear from several experts in how you can utilize the full resources available to you to plan and run a highly successful trunk show in your practice or optical shop. Today's presenters include Zvi Pardis, Head of Content at iCare Pro, and Chris Farola of Clear Vision Optical. Chris is Sales and Marketing Events Associate. You've likely seen Chris at one of the many uh, optical trade shows, regional events, and trunk shows all across the country. Svi and Chris, welcome to you both. Thank you so much, Roger. Pleasure to be back on these webinars. Um, and, uh, you know, as we jump right through it, you know, the main focus here is obviously the art of the trunk show. And uh, there's a lot that goes into making an effective trunk show. So, you know, my goal working with Chris is to take everyone who's in here uh, viewing uh, through what it takes, uh, get those creative juices going, talk about planning. Um, so that's the rundown. We're going to talk about what it really takes to plan to be creative, um, making a memorable and enticing event. Obviously, it's important to choose the right vendors who are going to work with you well, how to build up that buzz and promotion, and then I'm going to give you a case study of a practice from beginning to end of the things they did that worked out really in their favor to put on a great trunk show. So, uh, you Steve, know, let me, let me jump back in here for one minute. I did want to mention that we want you to be part of it, you the listener, and uh, you may uh, type in your questions or comments in the chat box that you see at the top right of your screen, and uh, we will try and get to as many of your questions and comments along the way as we can. So please be a participant. Thank you. Excellent. Um, and Chris, um, Please, uh, you know, because we, we talk about optical events at iCare Pro with our clients quite a bit, um, and obviously trunk shows are a big part of that. But what, you know, in your experience as a vendor is unique about a trunk show, and, and what are the benefits of running, say, a trunk show versus a sale or some other kind of optical event? Sure. And, uh, you know, thank you for having me on today. We definitely enjoy doing these webinars. So... Trunk shows are a unique way for your customers to kind of see you and see what you have to put on, how you set yourself apart from the other optical shops out there. You have a variety of one-on-one -on -one interactions with your customers and even your frame reps, something that you're not gonna normally have. Um, it's a good time for you to do a market research to kind of see which frame lines your customers are flocking to, which ones you may want to invest more in, which ones you may want to pull away from a little bit. And uh, it's way more touch points than your normal regular sale that you're doing. So you're going to have time to chat with the customer just about their everyday lives. You're able to chat with them about their likes, their dislikes in terms of frames, uh, the branding and how that goes. And so you have a, very, a variety of touch points uh, throughout an entire trunk show that you don't normally get when you're just doing uh, normal sales with them on the day to day. Okay, so as a practice who's, you know, obviously doing, you know, eye care and optical is, is a part of that business, um, running a trunk show is a real chance to get your finger on the pulse of, of the optical side of things in a, in a really direct way with your core patient base. Is that, is that kind of, uh, am I getting that right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good way for you to connect with your core patients as well as going out and prospecting for new patients. Uh, a very good way to, you know, get your get your trunk show to be more popular is to just go about town and, and work with different businesses and try to get those new patients that you might not already have in your office. Phenomenal. And we're uh, we're going to discuss uh, that a bit more, uh, you and I, as this uh, webinar develops. Um, but let's jump right into the idea of uh, well, let's let's talk. Let's recap for a second here, because um, one of the things that we've done in the last couple of webinars here with uh, Review of Optometric Business um, have been on the topics of optical events and how to promote them, as well as social media for optometry. So when it comes to these optical events, we'll be sharing a link here to view that recording, at, you know, uh, on demand at your own leisure. Um, we're not going to cover by any means everything that we covered in that webinar 
Um, that webinar was was very broad and lots of great information there. Um, but in short, you know, just to recap, it is important that you um, have an objective that you're always building on your personal practice brand and everything you do should be an extension of that. And that is just as true for a trunk show as it is for anything else. Um, understanding your audience, learning more about your audience, um, but obviously, you know, building on what you've already ascertained about your audience. And obviously you want to think very carefully about the timing. Um, now, I, I had a question for you, Chris, that popped up, um, and you know, we, we, <laughs> we get asked questions like this all the time, um, and from your perspective as a vendor, is there a, is there a specific demographic who's a better target uh, for a trunk show, or does it really sort of depend on what the trunk show is featuring? Definitely very heavily dependent on which frame lines you're featuring at your trunk show. Um, you know, if you're doing a children's uh, frame trunk show for a back to school event, you're you're going to be targeting moms and, and those who are going to be buying children's frames for them. Uh, if you're doing some sort of son's trunk show, maybe ramping up spring and you want to get a sunglass sale going, you might be targeting more of the, you know, 30 to 35, 40 demographic for women. But you never want to discount people who are buying for others as well, uh, of course. Moms are going to be buying for the children. Um, maybe they'll be buying gifts for others uh, in terms of sunglasses. So you kind of really have to know your audience and who you're inviting and who you're targeting for the trunk show. So again, if you want to ho host a children's trunk show, you, you know you're going to be inviting uh, a lot of moms to the trunk shows. Gotcha. Uh, and definitely, you know, from our perspective, and we'll get into this a bit later, um, <clears throat> if you're choosing to do paid promotions there, you want to absolutely be a little bit more sticky about who the audience is. Um, but uh, by the sound of it, you know, the audience is whoever is relevant to the frame lines uh, you're featuring. So, uh, okay. So, <laughs> um, and this is something I'm sure you'll agree with, uh, Chris, is that, uh, and we get, uh, you know, <laughs> all the time we'll have clients who are like, oh, I, I want to do a trunk show. Um, oh, when? Uh, next week. Oh, what, what have you planned out so far? Uh, oh, nothing. Well, <laughs> uh, trunk shows to do well from either the promotional digital marketing side of things um, or the work you want to, you know, preparational work you want to be doing with your rep takes planning. You really want to plan it out ahead of time. Um, you know, from our end, we can probably move a little bit faster than arranging, you know, what takes to arrange with a with a vendor, but it still is something you want to put some some time into. Uh, Chris, how how far back in advance do you suggest uh, to, you know to your clients to, that they actually start planning their trunk shows? Yes, planning is everything with these. I've had plenty of uh, instances where, like you said, people say, "Oh yeah, I want to do it in a few days," and uh, I'm like, "Okay, well, I don't know if UPS will ship uh, any materials out that quickly, but we'll try our best." Um, yes. Yeah, so my suggestion. At minimum, you're going to want at least two months to plan in advance. Uh, the ideal range, you're going to be looking at, you know, six to eight months in advance, really able to cultivate how many people you want to invite, what you're going to be showcasing, your promotions, uh, the special events that you may be having surrounding the trunk show. Um, I think that six to eight months range gives you a great amount of time to get a few rounds of invites out, you know, a few rounds of uh, email promotions or social media promotions, and you're really giving the vendor that you are coordinating with, uh, maybe multiple, you're giving them a plenty of time to, if they're willing to help you, uh, you're giving them plenty of time to send you extra samples because a lot of the times your frame rep may only have a certain amount of samples and you want to you want to showcase the whole brand. You don't want to miss out on any colors or styles. So you'd have to coordinate with your frame rep and with the vendor to get a, additional styles and, and that takes time to pull that inventory. So them knowing that much in advance means that you won't have any headaches the day of the show. Uh, I've seen a couple of trunk shows go awry just because of the fact that it was only planned with you know, a few days notice and yeah, everybody in, tries their best, but you kind of have to make the best of uh, the planning time that you're allotted. Yeah, uh, very well put. And uh, in our experience as well, you're just not going to get the, the buzz going and the reach going to get people to these events if you try to pull one off last minute. No, um, absolutely not. And uh, you know what? 
uh, in our experience as well, the more creative and personal you can make a trunk show, you get vastly more resonance, you know, with, with your patients and with the public in general. There's more of a reason to come to it. It's less bland. It's interesting. It's you. It's your brand as a practice, which is something we spoke a lot about it in, in our previous webinar on optical events. Um, and this absolutely is an extension of that. Um, the more time you can give yourself to plan, the more creative you have time to be. And if you, you want to plan to be creative, um, and uh, you need to plan to be creative. So that, you know, that, and I'm going to show you a few examples of um, how you and your staff can be maximally involved in what the vendor is doing and in the general ambiance. It is, at the end of the day, your practice, and you can set the stage for that to be a highly personalized experience for your patient base and new people coming through so they can experience your practice. Um, so I'll show you all a few examples as we go through that of what some great themed um, trunk shows look like you know and the main thing is to make sure it's going to be memorable and enticing and chris is going to talk a little bit um with me down the line about the kinds of incentives you want to give um but in addition to you know incentivization through sales um you also want to think about uh the theme of the event um having food having ambiance having decor having music um all of those things uh if it accords to a certain kind of fun theme make it not only a lot more interesting and, and give more people a reason to come but those who came and had a great time are more likely to talk about it come the next time bring more so the more you can put into this the better um, i mentioned this this guy right here this trunk show um, <clears throat> on one of the last webinars we did and I, i'll bring it up again uh, because it's it's just it was just a very clever way um, to have a Tiffany's trunk show with a breakfast at Tiffany styled event, you know, people showed up, uh, you know, the timing was in the evening, it, there was, you know, wine and cheese and people dressed up for it and they had the right kind of music. Um, and it was a really, really phenomenal event. Uh, and it was a real blast that people, you know, got a lot of buzz on social media for this practice that we were running this for. Um, and, uh, you know, th that kind of, forethought is absolutely what you want to give yourself time to plan for. Uh, it's really difficult to do that kind of thinking, how you can make this fun and an extension of who you are as a practice if you're not giving yourself the time to plan that. Um, here's one that was right around, uh, obviously it was Halloween time, and uh, that was also an, a, a, a fun evening kind of event uh, with a specific kind of decor and, and focus, and uh, also a very well attended trunk show. Um, the more you can get that dead on, the more it's going to work for you. Um, and of course, obviously, we're going to pass this back to Chris, but you always, always, always want to work closely with your vendor and the rep that you have. Um, not only in terms of promotion, but that's a big one. You know, when, when someone's a, a client is asking us to promote um, a trunk show with them, to plan it and, tr and, and promote it, we'll always say, well, what vendor are you working for? ask them for images, ask them what level of involvement they're gonna have. Um, they're gonna be a huge asset to make this as successful as possible because obviously it's in everyone's best interest that it be as successful as possible. So Chris, you know, tell me a little bit about what, uh, what goes into choosing the right vendor? What, what should people expect from a, a good vendor and a good rep when planning a trunk show? Sure, so of course the rep and the vendor are going to go hand in hand but it starts with the vendor because they're carrying the lines that you may or may not want to feature uh, but you shouldn't look at your vendor as just the company that you're buying the frames from uh, it's often what people are doing and they're not really they're not really focused on uh, looking at them as a partner but you should really be looking at your vendor as a partner and the part and the vendor should be looking to help you make the trunk show as successful as possible you're selling their frames they want you to do as just as well as you want to do so you definitely want your vendor to be a partner for you um and you you, you know you, you can rely on your vendor if you if you don't have somebody at the vendor you should reach out to your rep or maybe even to the company itself and you know look for that person in the company who's running the events and ask them for their opinion on running a trunk show with uh you know whichever frame lines they may have um they can provide guidance on best practices for that, how to host the trunk show itself, you know, and trainings on their brands. They always have trainings on the brands. So you definitely, if you're, if you're not going to have the rep there, 
you're going to want to do that. Um, and then leaning on your, like you had mentioned, you kind of lean on your vendor for the quality product imagery. If you're going to be creating uh, some sort of graphics for these shows, you want to have the best images possible and you don't want to take them with your iPhone of the pictures that you, of the frames that you have. So you definitely want to include some high quality product imagery and all brands, uh, all vendors these days have, you know, photography studios taking pictures of their frames and perfect lighting and the pictures are curated. They have the quality for you. You want to utilize them for that. Uh, in terms of a good rep, uh, that really just, it'll depend on your relationship with the rep. You definitely want to be able to call up your rep and say, you know, six months from now, I'd like to have a trunk show hosting you and your brands. Can you do that for me? And kind of right out the gate, asking them what they can do for you. Are they, uh, are they able to bring the entire line? Is that something that's possible? If so, you know, that again goes back to the planning. Um, that's something that you need to mention to them. It, the time that you get to spend with the rep as well, you know, there's never any better time than a trunk show. You're there for an entire day to kind of talk to the rep, see what they're like, kind of help them understand your business more. They're the people who are coming in to check your inventory, to make sure that your frames are selling the right way, to position your board space. You're going to utilize that time not only to sell frames, but to build the relationship with the rep who's selling these frames to you. and that's only going to improve your practices profitability if they're uh, more aware of what sells well in your practice. Chris, you mentioned that um, sometimes the, you would get training and not have the rep in-house. Is there any reason why that would be advantageous or is it almost always better to have the rep present? I believe it is always better to have the rep present. They're the ones who are going to be the experts on the brand uh, other than the actual vendor themselves, but as, as we know, there's countless practices across the country, so you can't have the vendor go to each one of them. And the the rep is just as good, if not better, with the brands. So I really believe that you should have your rep at any trunk show that you host, but some practices decide not to because of the amount of frame lines that they're carrying. So it's, it's a bit of a personal preference in terms of what you do, uh, but definitely would be a much easier time for you if you had your frame rep there to help you uh, along with the trunk shop. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Um, so, you know, and uh, I, as you mentioned before, you know, the rep will always help you get the very latest images um, that you want to be using to promote it ahead of time. And that's absolutely something we recommend to our clients. We, of course, have our own um, library of images, but it's not going to be of the newest line. Obviously, only the, the, the vendor has that. Um, you're already investing. I always tell our clients, um, the vendors are already investing huge capital in developing their marketing. You might as well take advantage of that by getting some images for your own promotion. Um, so uh, what I always suggest, um, particularly if, if you want to promote you know, the kind of themed event that's really going to work well, is plan that theme uh, and then plan the creatives. Taking into account whatever imagery the, the the rep you know if it fits to the theme is going to provide you and generally people want to see you know in some form or another the kinds of the the newest hottest lines that are possibly going to be um, available so um, you also want to pay attention to um, you know to the execution where everyone's going to be um, you want to um, you know obviously have a sense, you know, it depends on how big your staff is, but you, you want to know where everyone is going to be just logistically, who's doing what, where, and when um, in an organized way well in advance in order to make this, uh, you know, flow smoothly. Um, Chris, do you have anything to add from the vendor perspective about the sort of day, you know, the logistics of the actual setup? Uh, yeah, uh, again, it goes to the planning part of it. Um, they'll definitely be able to send you the newest uh, lines for the day of planning and also coordinate with their rep in terms of when the rep has to attend the show, what they'll need for the show. We have, uh, you know, sometimes a rep will want a branded tablecloth, they'll need specific sizes. Each practice is going to be different. Some practices provide, you know, a standard eight foot table for the rep to use. Others don't even have a table and they kind of just, they put trays all around the office and people just 
walk around, check out the frames uh, in a more natural setting as opposed to having just tables lined up. So again, as working with the vendor earlier, the better. Um, they can help provide any sort of materials that you might need. And then again, working with the rep to kind of let the rep know, okay, you know, I'm going to have a uh, I'm going to have you, I'm going to have a rep from another vendor, and then I'm going to have two reps from this vendor. Uh, is that all right with you? You know, can you, you think you can set up uh, this brand? So it's, it, it definitely helps to work with the rep and the vendor ahead of time to kind of let them know what you're expecting, what your turnout is going to be expected to be. Is it a small office that you kind of invited way too many people to, or is it a large office that you're trying to make sure that you can fill. So it's good for rep and vendor to know that way ahead of time. Yeah, Chris, uh, Roger jumping in here again. Um, you and Sphere are really onto a, a critical part of this, the excitement of a uh, new product that perhaps isn't um, available otherwise. Um, what, is there any rule of thumb in terms of how much product should be unique product, a new line that hasn't yet been seen elsewhere, uh, creating a buzz about something that is uh, not widely available, that that's the specialness of, uh, of the trunk show itself? Tell me about uh, unique uh, goods that you're going to be bringing. Um, so I do think that it's very crucial to be bringing all of the new product for line and you definitely want to give your customers that you're anticipating at the trunk show as many choices as possible, but you don't want to give them too many choices because then they may get overwhelmed with the amount of frames that are there, not be able to decide on a pair. Maybe they're, you know, going between two or three pairs of frames and then they just decide, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just hold off on it. I'll buy them another day. And you really want to, you know, close the sale the day of the show. So not too many brands. You definitely, again, you want to have probably somewhere in the realm of three to six that you're really highlighting and maybe a few ancillary brands that you have there. Um, with our reps specifically, we have one rep for our brands, so they can choose any of the brands, all of the brands. Um, it's really up to the practice and what they want to showcase. Uh, what the reps will typically do at the show to kind of mitigate that uh, too many choices problem is that they'll put out one frame in each style and they will have the other colors available but just underneath the table and if somebody is interested in a specific style from a specific brand they'll grab that and then they'll grab all the other color options for them as well just to kind of give them that you know choice of what they want uh, so definitely definitely critical to not overload the customer with too many frames Mm -hmm. And in terms of price points, uh, does the excitement of a trunk show allow for a higher price point or is it a value-based uh, uh, experience or, or does that matter or depend upon the particular brand? Definitely my experience with trunk shows is that they are more value-based. Um, a lot of the people who are coming out to the trunk shows are looking to get a good deal and so you want to balance them uh, wisely, you know, you want to have your promotion, bring your higher end price points down a little bit. So it's more affordable for people, but you also want to have your, your mid tier price points. You want to have those brought down to an even better rate to have uh, new customers potentially coming in. Great. Mm -hmm. Really interesting uh, stuff to hear, Chris, and uh, it jives really well with some recent uh, marketing research about uh, people's willingness to try things. Um, I was just reading uh, basically uh, free samples in a grocery store. Uh, you've got one, you get a low turnout. You've got 18, you've got a low turnout. And there's a happy medium where you get a large percentage of people willing to try the samples. Um, you don't want it to be overwhelming and you don't want it to be um, unimpressive either. Um, you want to have that, that, you know, so it's, it's great to hear about what that, you know, golden point is in terms of variety that you're offering. Uh, and also really great to hear about the different price points, I think. Um, that's kind of the thing. That's kind of information that isn't necessarily available to lots of practices um, generally. So that you know, that's uh, that's a great thing to you know. Another reason you want to be talking to your rep um, ahead of time, and uh, and it brings us to the idea of buzz because you know buzz is um, not just about uh, you know a single social media post, but buzz is a whole buildup as to what's exciting, what is exciting, it was exciting, and it's it's from beginning to end. You, you, buzz is something you're actively working on developing from the planning stages during the event. I'm gonna show you some examples. Um, and as you lead into your following event, 
Um, and it all ties in again with that idea of theme and decor and the kind of uh, incentives that, uh, that you're offering. And as, as I mentioned, incentives aren't just on the price point, um, which Chris just uh, discussed, um, but um, also, as I mentioned, things like raffles, things like the kind of event it is are all a reason that people will want to be coming in. So um, Chris, do you have anything to add beyond what you've already said about um, incentivization, any rules of thumb uh, that you feel are, you know, are best practiced for a successful event? Definitely. Um, so just to touch back on the discounts briefly, like you said, they definitely are in everything, but you want to make sure that you're choosing the right discounts for your customers and you'll know your customers more, but I have found that uh, a discount off of a full frame lenses and everything is much more well received than potentially discounting a frame, just the frame uh, and then charging them full price for lenses. Uh, a lot of offices will think that if you say 50% off of the frame alone, uh, then it won't, uh, it'll go over well. But in in reality, they're looking to get the end price point to be the cheapest. So you, you don't wanna, you don't wanna hit them at the end of it and just say, oh wait, by the way, you know, this many hundreds of dollars it costs to get your lens. So definitely uh, a smaller discount on the whole frame actually works out better in the end for most of the trunk shows that I've dealt with. Um, and you know, you, you, you're gonna know your customer base a, a lot better. Uh, so you can kind of gauge how they will react to different discounts. Another other things that I've seen done at trunk shows just to kind of incentivize the people to come to the trunk show is literally hosting yoga classes during the trunk shows. Um, some, uh, eye care practices are right in the same town as a yoga studio and they do a collaboration with that yoga studio. They'll come in, they'll do a, a small little yoga class during the show and then after the show or rather before the show and then after the yoga class, they do the trunk show and they walk around, they do the frames, they, they check them out, they decide what they're gonna buy. Um, maybe you wanna treat the customers coming to your trunk show to a spa day. Uh, you put a spa day up for raffle. Um, you know, you got to give away these big ticket items or, you know, give them the idea that they may be able to win a big ticket item or be a part of a big ticket item to get them to give up their free time to come and purchase frames at your practice. That's some great stuff there, Chris. Um, I really like the idea of the, the yoga in-house. Um, I have seen on the, the medical side of thing as well, incentivization with a practice that's uh, you know specializing in a lot of dry eye treatment that they had. Uh, I don't remember if it was free or discounted, but it was you know first time you know trials of various dry eye treatments. Um, and that of course is something that tends to be ongoing. So the people will come back, but it was a chance once they're there and to bring them there to give them this free or heavily discounted um, treatment um, that actually worked out as a big draw and people became you know long-term dry eye patients uh, out of that as well so there's lots of ways you can incentivize um, you know th thinking out of the box on the, the big ticket item or the raffle event or even um, you know some of the medical stuff that you're doing in-house might be a you know you've got that fancy new uh, Lipiflow, you might want to offer some uh, <laughs> some free trials for some folks who might end up then coming, you know, more often for it. You know, just think about what works uh, for your practice. But I really like some of those ideas, Chris, and it's definitely the stuff we'll want to sort of pull from our clients and and strategize with our clients in order to get the promotion going. Um, which is, of course, what our next slide is on and topic is is how do you get uh, the word out and uh, obviously you want to think that uh, you might you want the opportunity to engage new patients with your practice and you'd be awesome if new patients can come um, but obviously as well you know from our perspective your existing patients are your greatest asset um, so you want to think about not only how to reach them but they're also the greatest asset because if they're on board and they have a relationship with you as a, as a practice they're also your greatest uh, you know, mouthpiece out there on social media and, and in real life uh, to get the word out that this is a cool event that's worth coming to. Um, you know, people follow people on social media. So definitely your first goal is to engage your existing patient base in our experience from the digital marketing side of things. Um, one of the things 
uh, that people often forget about is they're very focused on the social media, but one of the most important things you wanna actually build up some excitement for is on your website. Um, and that's because you know a, a decently SEO optimized website will get hundreds, even thousands, depending on the demographic you know, lo details of the location, um, thousands of, of uh, visitors per month. And there's no reason that you can't get them excited about an upcoming event. Uh, so here's a, what we call a, a website tile um, that you know I had for uh, one of my clients actually, and it was uh, a Cinco de Mayo uh, themed sip and shop. Um, they run these sip and shops with um, cooperative businesses in their area, so they're able to reach their pay, their uh, client base as well. You know, mutually, it's a great way. Um, it's part of the sort of community building we talked about in the um, optical events and social media webinars um, that I mentioned. Yeah, um, for those who haven't seen them, I, I do recommend you go and check them out. There's a lot of great information. Um, and this is precisely how you can benefit from what some of those arrangements and and co-marketing you know opportunities, and that you can get your word out. More broadly, they had uh, a giveaway. They had prizes from a bunch of vendors that they worked out ahead of time. Um, obviously, they had you know sort of uh, Cinco de Mayo themed uh, food and drink, and it was a very successful event. Um, and it happens to be that they got dozens of views uh, of that event um, within just a few days, simply by having a website um, tile up. Um, now, if you have a patient communication tool, a PCT. Um, it's time to talk email because um, there tends to be um, two ways that practices go. Uh, oh, I don't want to bother people with email, no, or no, or I don't have email, um, or I'm all in and I want to use email. Um, if you've got the opportunity to email your patients, do it. Um, don't do it too often. Don't be overly promotional all the time. But when you do have an exciting event, um, it's that's the time to reach out and let your patients know that this is going on. Um, and you know, if, if you can text your patients, great. Um, email tends to be the easiest because practices collect emails. So if you have demand for a solution reach, um, you're using a, you know, uh, a patient communication tool, it's very, very easy to set these up. And again, the more themed and personal your show is, the less overtly, you know, blase promotional it is and the more oh my practice my doctor is having this fun event and i want to go uh is kind of how that goes and if you don't have um a patient communication tool at least i hope you're collecting emails if not absolutely start like five years ago um but start now if you haven't um and you can use uh, external uh systems like mailchimp or constant contact um but it's not obviously tied into your ehr in any way you'll have to export your email list um, from your EHR and use that into, into MailChimp or Constant Contact. It's very simple, it's very inexpensive. I think for over 2,000 emails, it's under 2,000, it's free, and after that, it's about 10 bucks a month. We're not, not talking big bucks. Um, but you know, if you're not sending promotional material all the time, which you should not be, there are times, and a big trunk show, big seasonal events are the time to do it. And we certainly recommend that for our own clients as well. And we, we set them up for them as well, send them out, um, do the design. Um, and yet another reason that it's good to work in, in coordination with the, with the vendor, because the vendor will give us the best imagery to be using for that as well and make the most enticing email possible. Um, and of course, you've got people in and out of your practice all the time. Let them know about it. Um, In-office materials are worth doing. And again, um, you know, don't print too many. Uh, it, it can be costly. You know, you do want to think about your return on investment, but you absolutely should be having staff engaged with the right promotional materials to let folks coming in and out of your office, you know, hey, you know, we've got this Calvin Klein uh, event coming up, or we've got, you know, this amazing trunk show that's coming up, and we really want you to come, and it'll be fun, and it'll be wine, and there'll be cheese, and it'll be, you know, dressing up, and um, or whatever that that event is going to look like for you. Uh, build some vibe. People might take that home. They might talk to others. Uh, it works. Um, here is an example of our, um, we have a campaign system that you can use uh, through our um, app that our clients have access to as well. Your marketing manager can do this for you uh, if you'd rather do it that way. Um, but it's very easy to set up campaigns uh, this way and uh, that includes printed material that you can then um, get the design just right and send it off to your printer to get it printed. So let's talk social media because that's a big one. 
And uh, doctors often ask us about uh, social media and how to be more active on social media um, and what, you know, basically how to make it work. And we did have a very in-depth webinar on social media, um, the different levels of engagement you can be doing on social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram for this um, audience. Um, and in our events webinar with uh, Dr. Sims, she talked a lot about how she uses social media. Um, so um something and I'll, I'll be sending out some links uh for this uh for these webinars uh, at the end here um but i do suggest you see it um basically um expect to if you have an engaged existing group on social media you can expect to at least get your own patient base which is uh, pretty much what most practices um are up you know they're up to on their social media prowess um it could be that if you're doing a lot of community building with local uh, you know, complementary businesses, um, local organizations, you can expand your organic reach that way, um, but definitely be plugging away on the social media. Um, you may not, depending on how strong a presence you have, you may not reach a lot of new patients. Um, and that is fine, but there's no reason that your existing patients wouldn't be reached. And that's an opportunity again, to have them reshare, repost and comment on, um, on your event that's coming up. So I don't wanna to get too into this because we covered it in detail, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, your expectations for new patients via social media need to be tempered. Um, and it does very much depend on the strength of your uh, existing social media presence, even if you're paying to promote it. And sometimes uh, we do recommend for our clients to boost their posts, for, um, but you know the data is pretty clear. Um, if you're going to post it, now is a time to think about your key demographic audience, um, who's actually gonna be the most likely to engage on social media. Um, limit your, your boost by location, reasonable location. People will really not come 40 minutes on the highway for a trunk show unless you live in a very remote area. Um, or it's very you know unique for a very exclusive line, that does happen. Um, but generally that's not what's going on. Um, it's basically um, women in their 30s through their 50s who are most engaged in something like Facebook and will make a lot of those decisions to be most engaged with this material uh, in general. Um, so if you're gonna put money into something like this, um, you wanna focus on that, you wanna focus on, on interests. All of these things are fairly easy to do on Facebook um, if you're doing this yourself. It's not rocket science. Um, but something to pay attention to is the data about organic versus paid. Um, if you are weak on your organic, your paid is not going to be that, you know, it's not going to be that effective. And uh, the kind of material that works best on paid is already strong organic content. And you can see here the most, the highest level of engagement occurs um, when you're doing mostly organic with some paid uh, on social media. So it's always worth you know, in the long term, working on your social media presence, because when the time comes for a strong webinar promotion, you want that in your back pocket. Um, and data is everything, it really is. Um, you know, your previous list uh, for uh, who attended is a great, you know, list to start out with if you're boosting. Um, basically, you wanna track as much as you possibly can about who is attending, who signed up, who RSVP'd, and I'll get into that with this example uh, right now here, because I want to take you through what from beginning to end uh, with a with a pretty average practice in terms of its social media presence. I want to add they're not they're not doing anything exceptional. It is very possible to be exceptional, um, but here's what you can do with um, some planning and some foresight. Uh, it's a pra it's a practice that um, that we manage one of our clients, and I just want to take you through what um, you know a really successful trunk show can look like from beginning to end. And one of the first things um, again, it's a fall. Frame Fest, they have a theme, there's an idea, there's a nice offer here. Um, although they did just do the frames, I'm sorry to say, Chris, um, next time, hopefully they'll <laughs> they'll do it on the end point. Um, they, had, they did have a, a raffle, um, which got people's attention with the necessity to RSVP, and here's where data can really play an important role, and also build a level of engagement that's higher than just letting people know you're hosting something. Um, they did make use of email, they posted multiple times, which I'm going to get into, um, but they really worked hard to get the word out. Um, at least, I think they started about six weeks in advance, which is, in our opinion, cutting it close. Um, 
but but you know not too close to make it in, unsuccessful and they i don't doubt that they reached out to the their vendor in this case um well much earlier um so here what you see here is actually to RSVP to be entered in the raffle, you needed to RSVP for the event. So the link from social media, the link from the email led to this on their website, which had a brief description of it and a simple form. It's very easy to set up that we did for them. Um, and then they get the name and email and phone number of the person who is RSVPing. And this builds a sense of commitment, um, but it's also a list of people that you can then special invite to the next event and, and um, you know, private events, exclusive events, VIP events or something, as you get more experience running these, you can absolutely do. If you have a demographic of higher spenders that you wanna do an invite only event um, with a select vendor to show off, you know, a high end line, that can be extremely successful. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what you do with it. The fact is that the more data you're able to collect, um, the better, and it's all legitimately collected. And obviously, you know, everything you should be doing is always uh, gonna be HIPAA compliant. And uh, so um, this specific practice, I did see a question that came in about um, refractions during the day. I think the question was about it. This practice did do only refractions throughout the day. They did have the trunk show during office hours, which we often recommend because then you get traffic that's coming through anyway. Um, and the whole theme, uh, they had, you know, like a fall seasonal music track and they had great food and that together makes for a good mood. And frankly, a good mood means people much more open to listening, buying, getting excited about new frame lines. So um, that, you know, that was the lead up. They did multiple posts on social media. Um, again, they this is not a practice with particularly broad organic reach. They have their own patients, but they did get a nice amount of engagement um, on these posts. Um, they started early, but they also captured uh, details of the event during. And I think that's a really um, important way to build. People have an innate fear of missing out. And, you know, here's the post that they did on Facebook. It's in full swing, only 30 minutes left. They had all these great images. Um, taking that a step further, here's a video of a practice that I had um, that was, uh, the video's not playing, but um, that live streamed the event and they showed the woman out front um, in a large practice, um, you know, with a sign flagging down traffic. That's not always appropriate for every kind of practice, but this is a large practice. Um, she, this, the staff member took the camera through the event, showed off the different vendors, had them speak a little bit about it. Um, one of the great things about Facebook Live is everyone who's liked or engaged with your Facebook page before gets a, a very obvious update. Someone is live streaming um, and they will watch it. The level of engagement for Facebook live stream is, is pretty high. Um, and it works. People do show up. Uh, when you do that, you know, last minute, especially if you've already worked really hard to create a really cool vibe. And um, this video showed off the music and the food and the decor that they had. Uh, and it was really a, you know, it, it, it looked like fun. Who wouldn't want to be there if you're in the area and at all interested in, in frames? Um, if I could just jump in really quick. I actually, sure. it's, it's funny that you put that post up there. I don't see many really if any accounts of ours who are doing trunk shows posting those kind of behind the scenes pictures it's you know of course prior to the show you want to post your promotional stuff the graphics that you create etc but the behind the scenes stuff and that it goes along with your organic posts doing well is it's it's organic material it's uh, when we go to you know bigger industry trade shows and we have our kind of behind the scenes pictures of us setting up booths or stuff like that, or, you know, having meetings with clients. Those are the posts that do so do very well. So this idea of posting, you know, just kind of behind the scenes, what's going on that day, even live streaming, that's a very good idea and definitely something that a lot of people aren't doing. So you're going to stick out. Yeah, it's, it's, um, if you're planning ahead, you can delegate to staff who's doing what and, and staff being involved in the decor and overall vibe of it um, will make it a more successful event. Obviously, you don't want to depend just on the vendor uh, rep to be doing all the legwork. You want to, it's in your interest to make this as fun, fantastic and personal uh, uh, an event as possible. Um, 
So, and that's, uh, it's the nature of social media is people aren't there to be sold to. People on social media is to spy on friends and watch funny cat videos. So this spur of the moment kind of organic, fun, real life snapshots are, are exactly what people are drawn to on social media and that's why they work. So uh, absolutely, that's, that's what we always, you know, when we're, you know, trying to counsel our clients through best social media practices, you know, the, the balance is, Yes, we can make great promotional material for you, but what, what's actually gonna resonate the most is the stuff that you do spur of the moment, organic, on the spot. Absolutely. Um, and here's a rule, Chris, that I think uh, you're, you're pretty, uh, pretty up on. Uh, I know you, uh, Clear Vision is pretty good about uh, thanking the guests. How do, you, how do you do that? What do you go about doing for that? Definitely. I personally think sometimes follow-up can be even more important than the pre uh, communication that you might have with the customers if you're not following up with them then you're not closing the lead i mean it, let's just say hypothetically it's a new customer that you just had you got them to buy you got them to buy a, a fully uh full full frame package and you got it at the trunk show they had a great time but then they don't hear from you you know for maybe six months from now and when it's you know, when you think it might be their time to come in and get their eyes checked, they might see that more as a little promotional. But if you're following up with them right after the show, maybe a day or two later at most, you know, you're you're saying thank you. You're just no 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 promotional uh, part of it. Just really expressing your appreciation for them for coming to the trunk show and even buying the frame. You know, that's it's key. If to not not enough people are, are doing that and it kind of makes people like you said people don't like to feel like they're being sold to and when you don't treat them like like a human being it makes them feel like that uh they're not you can't just see them as somebody who you're going to make money off of you have to see them as you know part of your part of your family part of your customer base this is important to cultivate that relationship um i personally am a big believer in handwritten thank you notes it doesn't even matter if you have poor handwriting like myself it's definitely uh the thought that counts in that situation N almost nobody's doing that um we definitely we try to write as many thank you notes to people as possible here when uh when the situation comes up and it, it goes a long way and people are very grateful to just get some small little note even if it's just you know thank you for coming thank you for purchasing a frame we really appreciate your business and then you can continue to market to them, uh, you know, a little ways after, but just get that, th you know, that immediate thank you right out of the way. And that'll, that'll go a long way in making them uh, want to come back to your practice in the future. Absolutely. And that's some great insight. And I, <laughs> I don't necessarily advocate, um, not against it, but a handwritten note could be a lot of work depending on how many people show up, but it does add a personal touch uh, for sure. At the very least, uh, a personalized email um, could be very effective and certainly everyone should be thanked for attending. And if they're new patients, um, you might want to send them a different, you know, message about, you know, um, some of the, the kind of patient experience you deliver and, you know, you'd be happy to help them out with their family's eye care needs. Um, if you offer any medical specialties, you know, you can mention that, you know, that, you know, whether it's, uh, anything from dry eye to vision therapy, there's a, there's an opportunity to talk a little bit about that there in brief. Um, so always, you know, anytime you're engaging, uh, is positive for your building, your practice, uh, in any way, shape or form, even if it's an optical event leading into something else. Um, so I would agree 100%. And, um, people like to, to feel like, you know, thank you for showing up and, and take some of those great pictures you took during the campaign and make that note, that email, you know, a little bit more uh, personalized, even more so. The more you can make everything personalized from the show theme to the messaging, um, the more it'll resonate. And that's a general rule in business. And it's as true for um, eye care as it is for anything else. So, um, and obviously if you did, you know, um, the follow-up can be and should be public as well. Um, talk about the event, how fun it was, shout outs to people involved, tag people in images on social media. Um, and here they announced uh, this practice uh, that we've been doing sort of this walkthrough of what they did. Um, they announced their, um, their raffle winners and had pictures of them up and it was a whole thing. And, and just announcing that publicly is even more traction and follow up and it's, uh, there's a genuineness that comes through. So you always want, obviously wanna do that kind of thing 
uh, if you had a contest, but even so, uh, some kind of public announcement about the event afterwards uh, can be really meaningful uh, and worthwhile. And uh, this specific practice with that RSVP on the website, with the raffle, um, you know, not a profoundly strong social media presence. They didn't boost any posts, um, but with email and some, you know, posts, they um, they cleared over, you know, 10K in sales. It's not, not bad for, uh, for a relatively small trunk show. Um, and uh, they doubled the revenue from a previous event, which I, uh, I wrote up a case study on. It was a patient appreciation day, and I'll, I'll send that link out um, shortly here. Um, but you know, 60% of the RSVPs came, and I think that's, that really speaks to the power of having um, that kind of form on your site, that, that kind of buy-in, and, and uh, a total of 100 people came. So really, a, a, you know, what you don't gain in one, you'll gain for the next one, because it was a fantastic event that was fun, and people enjoyed themselves, they'll not only be willing to come to the next one, but they'll probably recommend to others. Um, and that, in that way, you know, your patients really are your greatest asset. So let me, um, you know, at the end here, I'll pull up uh, some links to those webinars and also to this uh, Patient Appreciation Day um, case study that we did, because that itself was a very, very clever event that this practice put on uh, and promoted. So I, uh, I do strongly suggest you take a look at that as well. Um, so Steve, that, if I could just jump in really quickly, one more thing sure. about the, the results. Um, you definitely don't want to limit yourself only to sales. It is very important that you that you you know track the sales for the shows, but never forget about the relationship that you're kind of building with the reps and the vendors through that. Um, some of my reps consider their most successful trunk shows to be the ones that are with the accounts that they've had for 10 to 15 years, you know, long-standing relationships with these practices. And that is definitely a very big part of it too. Um, you're gonna wanna, you build that relationship with a rep and with a vendor, and you have a partner in trunk shows for the foreseeable future that you can really trust and depend on. So that's another key part of the results here. Excellent. No, that's a fantastic point. And I think also I would, it, the end goal isn't necessarily uh, purely um, purely sales in it, from the patient side also. It's a, it's a long-term relationship you're building uh, with your patients and it's always a chance to express um, what kind of patient experience they can expect in general um, with the kind of vibe that they're getting at these events. Um, it, it makes existing patients more likely to recall and it makes new patients in and it makes the possibility of reaching new patients with um, the medical care that you're providing as well. So absolutely, I don't want to make this seem, you're absolutely right, I don't want to make it seem like this is very strictly a, uh, a focus on end sales. Um, but with uh, my point here is that with a bit of foresight and planning, um, a fairly average practice was able to do very well on a trunk show. So, um, and I've seen trunk shows, you know, Chris, maybe if you've got some success stories in terms, you know, we, we don't generally talk about the total um, revenue earned or sales numbers. That's not the kind of thing we're tracking with our clients, but it is something I imagine you're doing with, uh, with the practices you're working with. So, um, uh, you know, maybe if you've got some, uh, some interesting uh, case studies to share, we'd you know, love to hear that. Yeah, for sure. We, we have, uh, like I said, uh, our trunk shows are hosted all over the country, so a variety of results are coming in. Um, I have a couple of different examples where, you know, one of our reps, just right upstate New York, in a matter of, you know, a few hours, he's selling roughly 45, 50 frames just by himself. Um, we have a couple of reps who will do a lot of trunk shows in a larger practices that host multiple frame reps and you know throughout the day if you're looking at maybe three to four vendors uh, uh frame reps hosting you, you could see anywhere from like 100 to 125 frames for about you know six to seven hours worth of work um and yeah it's it we we definitely do a lot of tracking with the with the frames uh frame sales in terms of the trunk shows so it, it it varies, but you can definitely, like you said, it lines up with the uh, right around the 10K that they this particular practice cleared. So uh, definitely a lot of frames being sold at some of these shows. 
Absolutely. And this was a this was a rural practice, I forgot to mention in that case study. So uh, the rural practices seem to be the ones that host the most successful trunk shows in my experience. Oh really? Why do you think that is? I, I think that they just do a lot better uh, job of making their customers feel very important and feel like they're they're in a way brand loyal to them. Um, and I, I think it's just a lot uh, definitely like the small town vibe. There's not as many, and I don't know. I, I think I think it's it's interesting to see that, but yeah, I, I've noticed that a lot more of the role practices are the ones that are hosting the more successful trunk shows, and the more consistent trunk shows. Interesting. Um, okay, so um, let's open it up to some uh, to some questions. Uh, Roger, did you want to field some of those? Yeah, I certainly do. And uh, please, uh, if you're out there, uh, write your questions in the chat box, and we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, pose them to our experts here today. Hey, one question. Um, at Review of Optometric Business, we talk about a couple of trends, not just in optical, but in uh, in retail and independent uh, merchants. And uh, one is um, uh, one is friends and family, and one is another is is First pri Friday. And it seems like those are two very successful promotions that have sort of different messages. The first, uh, I'm sorry, the friends and family being that, hey, you're a special customer to us and we are inviting you into something special that not everybody comes to. And that's part and parcel of what we're talking about here. Um, the other, the first Friday is kind of like open your doors. We're part of a community. Maybe you don't know what we do. And so here's an opportunity for us to show you that. And uh, a trunk show would be a great uh, example of how to really maximize that if your time is limited your staff is limited which of those two customers is more important to you I know both are the one that maybe came in and said yeah I never I walked past this place but I never knew about it and the one who said yeah I'm, I'm a regular here and I heard about this and I really like what they do and I'm a, I'm a loyal customer if you had to sort of direct your staff to uh, to um, spending their time, their limited time with uh, those two types of customers. What would your uh, what would your recommendation be, uh, Chris? I think that you definitely want it's it's a very hard uh, balance to make, but you definitely want to make your loyal customers feel like just that the loyal customers, the ones that have been with you. Um, and and I do believe that that will come back uh in a positive way for the accounts and the the prospects and and i i think that if you're you kind of have to do this balancing game of you know who who am i who am i focusing on right now you in reality they just need to do their best to kind of keep the same face for all customers um prospects are important but if your current customers feel like they've been left out to dry then it's that's not a good case either because then the prospects that you're looking at are going to hear about that and then they're not going to want to do business with you so it's a little bit of a give and take in that uh, situation mm -hmm. okay uh, here's another question about the lead time for doing such an event you said really you really want to allow enough time so that your uh, loyal customers can plan to come and you can promote it adequately um does is that dependent somewhat on your retail situation in other words if you're in a high traffic area would you be able to put together an event uh, with less lead time um, say because you have a lot of foot traffic in a mall situation or a busy downtown situation I'd say you're always gonna want to have the most time possible um, but yes if you have if you don't uh, worry about foot traffic as much and you feel like you have a lot more people like you said like in a downtown area uh, you can rely more heavily on that but then you'll have to do your marketing towards that uh you know you're going to want to have the signage out front um you know put stuff in the windows you're going to really need to target towards that at minimum like i said before i wouldn't i would not suggest doing anything less than two months in advance mm -hmm. okay um yeah, here's one. Oh, we were talking about um, the doctor involvement. You said that you've seen cases where the where the doctor or an associate or so forth is actually doing refractions during the uh, during the trunk show, or were you recommending maybe that their time would be better spent in the engagement with their loyal customers and new customers that are there? I think that's a tricky one, and it depends on the dynamic in the practice. 
Um, if from my perspective, Chris, you might have another one. I think it has the people want, if especially if they're engaging with the practice for the first time, that's a real chance to see the doctor where the doctor, you know, sings, so to speak, you know, where the doctor's at his best or her best. Um, and it probably helps sales. People know they don't have to go home and get a prescription or book an appointment to get a prescription, but they know on the spot they're getting an up-to-date uh, refractive exam. Um, I would suspect that that helps the sales process. Um, and that is the doctor doing what the doctor does best. So that would be my take on it. And I know in this case of the practice that I showcased, they were doing, they weren't doing anything else that day in terms of the medical side, but they were absolutely doing refractions. Um, and, it, and they reported to us that that was extremely helpful. Um, Chris, do you have any uh, experience the other way or anything to add? No, I agree with that. I think that that makes sense. Um... I think that it is, again, it's a balancing act because it's going to be a busy day no matter how it goes. And uh, yeah, I don't, I think if a patient, a new potential patient came in and they just see the doctor talking the entire time, I think that they might not see that as a good thing. You kind of want to see them in, uh, in action. So it's, it's a little bit of a balance. They definitely want to be able to address the crowd and, you know, thank them for coming. But at the same time, you know, uh, like you said, with the refractions thing, like going on during the show, I think that that's important as well. Yeah, I think it's a tricky one because you want the the doctor he or she to be at their best in terms of the care they're giving, and they're probably going to be pretty distracted with the numbers of people that are there. Um, but on the other hand, there is a, an important message that uh, getting an eye exam is not a hassle. We are available. Uh, it's not going to take a long time. You can make an appointment now and be seen very quickly. So, uh, yeah, that's, I, I think, a, a balancing act for, for any practice. And the dynamic is whether or not you have an associate who can be doing that. Uh, it could be doing refractions while, while you're there. Uh, so interesting. <laughs> um, let's see. Question here on, um, yeah, thank yous on, uh, yeah, back to school. Uh, it's interesting. Is there a, a best time to do back to school promotions and kids frames and so forth. One of our doctors said, well, I'm always busy back to school, but I get even busier when the first report card comes in and Johnny or Sally are not doing too well in school. That's when people really come. Any kind of a uh, first report card kind of uh, uh, strategy uh, for uh, for the timing of a trunk show? Uh, that's quite interesting, actually. Yeah, we the back to school trunk shows that we typically deal with usually happen around uh, three month period of, you know, end of July, August to September. Um, I guess first report cards to come around October. It's definitely an idea. And while you don't want to host too many trunk shows and kind of oversaturate your customers, you may want to host a, uh, a few smaller shows that are more targeted. So again, maybe you do a sun sale and then you do your back to school sale and maybe you do two back to school sales. Uh, one with a slightly different offer or maybe the same offer and you just kind of target a bit of a different audience with that uh than the ones that may have already been to the first one it's yeah. definitely not something yeah you don't want to you kind of have to make the decision there do you do you feel confident in your customers that you're going to be able to get uh turnout at both of them maybe the second one is uh more closely associated with uh, promoting a second pair a, pr a second pair of purchase which is definitely definitely a harder thing to get people to do but uh, maybe if they come to the first one, they buy a pair and then they go to the second one and their second pair is 50% off even. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend promoting the next uh, trunk show at an existing trunk show? For example, I, I go to a wine shop that has personalized service and, and they say, well, we're having a, a tasting this Saturday, but next week you really want to come. It's uh, Barolo's or something. And a, a camera shop says, yeah, well, uh, we have some experts coming in from Nikon next week to do a, a, a piece on how to use a flash or an outing to a game preserve or something. So, so retailers have become educators in that sense. Or do you think that that sends the wrong message that you kind of have to plan from trunk show to trunk show as opposed to seeing uh, making eye care a regular uh, a part of your life? I think that as long as your trunk shows are different enough and they're not just the same thing over and over again, I think that you can definitely promote your trunk shows, uh, but you have to be smart about the planning on them. You know, nobody's going to go to another trunk show weeks later. I, I don't believe um, that's going to be a, a hard thing to get customers to do, but as long as you have them adequately spaced out throughout the year and they are different enough and the, 
the reasoning to bring them to the trunk show is different enough, whether it be a different sale or a different, you know, large giveaway or promotional uh, items. I think as long as it's it's different, then you 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 can definitely promote it. Uh, each trunk show about the next trunk show. Uh huh. Would you? Um, and here's a, another one about multiple sponsors at a trunk show. Many um, optical shops may have a side business selling uh, 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 dermatology products, very high end uh, cosmetics uh, or jewelry and so forth. Would you recommend or recommend against having more than one vendor uh, at a trunk show? I think that. Uh, having a totally different product that might be interesting. I've actually never seen that done at a trunk show. So uh, I'm not really, I don't have any experience with that, but it could be, it could be an interesting thought. It could give somebody a reason to come into the trunk show who's not necessarily looking for glasses, but maybe see something that they like. And then all of a sudden they walk out with a pair of glasses. So it's, got to be done in a smart way it can't be something completely different but something that is similar like you said like the dermatology stuff or something like that that might be that might be a successful way to bring in a variety of customers to your practice yeah interesting yeah um <laughs> very good any other uh, closing thoughts uh Svi or uh or chris before we wrap up here today well i do see um that there's um quite a few questions still coming in um Okay, so go maybe, ahead. maybe let's ask a couple of those. Yeah, um, let me ask uh, Chris. Um, um, I mean, I'll, I'll answer from my experience, but I think you're the better one to speak to this. Uh, someone just asked, uh, uh, Lydia asked, have you ever planned an event outdoors, a uh, festival or vendor market, and what are the few key things to watch out for? Um, and in my, that practice that I showed, they, they saw a market improvement by bringing that event indoors because their patient appreciation day was outdoors, but I don't know the details as to what was difficult about that. Um, and that's a single case. So Chris, do you have any uh, experience about that? Just a few, but definitely we've had a couple of those. You're going to want to be careful. Of course, weather is uh, completely unpredictable at times, but I've had uh, one recently earlier in the year where it was in Southern California. So it was the weather wasn't really something that was going to be questionable, but it was very windy. So we had to be careful about the type of signage that we provided for the day of the show, um, you know, kind of it, it's a bit more of a logistical headache to do an outdoor trunk show because you'll have to account for the weather and what you can actually show. And, you know, if you have to have a plan B, of course, if day of the weather just turns and you have to bring everybody inside. So you don't want to, you know, overextend yourself and bring too many vendors, which may be the reason why you're having an outdoor trunk show. So you really have to kind of weigh the, the negatives and positives of that. Um, also, of course, have to get a tent, have to get some sort of uh, tents. We had the one that we had done earlier in the year was actually each vendor had their own tent uh, in the parking lot of the the very large practice. And a, the, the tents were branded, the signage was branded, but we had to make sure that we have to have everything tied down properly just in case the wind got a little too crazy. And all of the frames had to be laid out in different uh, standing trays because the normal trays that we use laid flat and it wasn't going to be optimal for people viewing the frames. So you just have to make sure that you're planning appropriately. You can't throw together an outdoor trunk show uh, without at least, at the very least, five months of planning. Perfect. Um... And it's interesting that, you know, we had a question come in about how early people need to start the promotional side of it. Um, and while these months in advance uh, with the vendor are absolutely crucial to do a good job on the promotion, um, I would say from the promotional side as well, you want um, you want to start getting the word out at least four to six weeks ahead of time. Um, and you know, alter the language every time you remind and remind often, at least on social media, a couple of emails, you know, not obviously not an email every day, but you know, um, a few emails in advance can really do well and do better. Uh, if people are busy and tend to get distracted. We all are like that. So the more touch points it's called, the more successful you're going to be. Um, and if you're not doing too many campaigns, um, 
no one's going to mind these emails. The handful of people who really don't want to get promotional emails of any time will always um, opt out, unsubscribe. That feature is available on any platform, um, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, so someone is also asking about um, the theme of the trunk show and how important it is, is one side of the question. And I think I'll speak to that. And then Chris, the, the second side is, is summer the best time to have a trunk show? Um, I would say the theme is absolutely essential. And the reason for that is otherwise it's just a generic sale. It's not an extension of who you are. It's not an extension of your practice brand. It's not interesting. It is purely, it's no different than, oh, there's a sale over at, I don't know, Marshall's. Um, that is much less exciting than my practice or that cool practice is doing this fun event with these cool lines. That I think is um, what will make the difference between people wanting to come and, and it being a mediocre show. Um, themes really, 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 really help drive interest. Um, and what about time of the year? Um, Chris, what do you think? Summer the best time to have a trunk show? So I definitely think that summer is the best time. However, I do see the most trunk shows happening in the summer. So you would have to be careful just in case you're in an area where there may be multiple practices that you're not uh, competing with any other trunk shows that may be happening, you know, within the same few days, you know, same week or whatever. Um, but yes, yeah, summer definitely seems to be the most optimal time. Our trunk show requests ramp up significantly from about about mid-May all the way until uh, pretty much end of September. So it's a Definitely a very big season for trunk shows with back to school in there. You have a great way to sell off sunglasses in there. Um, you know, you even have Father's Day in there with uh, maybe getting uh, some of the men's brands in there. So it's, yeah, summer, definitely ideal. You just want to be careful about the timing of your show. Perfect. Um, and another one I think um, that I'd love for you, Chris, to speak to um, and this comes up all the time, I can say with our own clients, they will say that they ha will have a very successful show, but they find that the lead up to um, a show sometimes eats into their sales. So this person, uh, Kylie writes, uh, I find my staff tend to promote trunk shows to patients, but it ends up eating into my sales of that product for the month plus prior to the show. How do I train my staff to avoid this? I think that... Uh... It's, it's going to be something that's inevitable with some customers. Um, a lot of people are budget conscious and they're going to go only to be purchasing frames at the best price that they could possibly get. Uh, I think that that definitely kind of stems from you want you want to have a, your, your promotion, the promotion on the frames, whether that's a full frame package or uh, just the frame itself. You want to have that not be competing too much with your typical promotions. Um, you know, you don't want to be giving away the farm and then for sure you won't have anybody buying during the week because if you're giving away 50% uh, off, 60% off on frames, then they're just going to wait. Um, you want to make sure that the trunk shows are ones that are more targeted. So you probably don't want to have every single brand in your office having a trunk show. You're going to probably want to have, like I said, you, you know, your specific frame lines, your children's back to school, your sunglass promotions. You, maybe you do one surrounding a holiday, a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, whatever that is. Um, you kind of have to just make it a little bit more targeted and a little bit more purposeful uh, as opposed to just a general, you know, here's the time for you to get cheaper frames and maybe also promote. Oh, this will be the only time that you'll be able to get new frames. Um, so maybe they, you know, if they don't like anything in the office, then they will come to the trunk show. But it's just a balancing act between making sure that you're not uh, alienating customers who are looking for a better deal and, you know, focusing on the customers who are definitely going to be coming into the trunk show. Great. Any, any further questions uh, that you see, Svi, from our, uh, from our listeners? Um, well, in the interest of time, I think we should probably um, wrap it up, but I do want you know everyone to know that you're more than welcome to send your questions on to us, and we'd be happy to, uh, to formulate an answer for you. Um, one final question that I think we should answer, though, just before I, we wrap this, is um, 
hosting an end of year sale to get old frames off their boards um, is that something that a practice that has um, inventory that's sitting around is that something that they that uh, you know they should be using a trunk show to try to clear what do you think Chris I definitely think that it's a good opportunity for you to clear out older inventory um, I have had a few that they sell off price frames um, that are just they haven't sold well throughout the year um, it gives you a good reason to get people into your office regardless that's at the end of the day you just want if you get them in the office you can do your best to sell to them but I think uh, yeah I think that that's definitely a good a good excuse to try to sell off the older inventory and um, you can make it feel a little bit more exclusive it's stuff that's not on the board it's stuff that you haven't seen in a while um, you know spin it in a way that it doesn't make it feel like it's because it's there at the end of the day they're just looking for a frame that fits them and maybe it's something that they just haven't seen because you pulled it off and it's you know not selling well Well, great. Um, I think we're going to wrap up then. And thank you for taking part in today's webinar, The Art of the Trunk Show. And thank you so much to uh, Svi Partis of iCare Pro and Chris Varola of Clear Vision Optical. Today's program was produced by iCare Pro, hosted by Review of Optometric Business and is sponsored by Clear Vision. In the next several days, you'll receive an email asking for your evaluation and providing a link to listen to our webinar again or to share it with an associate or colleague. Finally, today's webinar, The Art of the Trunk Show, will be archived on Review of Optimet I'm sorry, Review of Optometric Business and on iCare Pro, which has a wonderful section on webinars with great strategies and uh, tools to help you grow your practice or optical shop. Go to uh, iCarePro.com and look under ECP University. You'll find them. Well, we thank you for your participation today, and we wish you a good day.